express praise and honor be unto the Most High. God is indeed very good. And all the time, he is very good to us. Great is his faithfulness. I wish all of you prosperous new year. As we have come to the end of the year, we want to praise him for his goodness and mercies toward us. We want to welcome you. I welcome you to the final week of this Cortes Sabbath School, the English edition. And in fact, even for all Sabbath school lessons, we have come to the end of the year and we believe that the Lord will let us pass over peacefully and safely this night into the next year. We are looking at, we have looked at the various lessons or topics in this quarter, which has, um, which gave us the state or the condition of the dead as it relates to what will happen to the dead and then the ultimate salvation of humanity. Death, judgment, resurrection, and the second coming of Jesus. And then also hellfire and all of that. We have explored all of these. Um, <clears throat> for lesson one, we looked at rebellion in a perfect world. Lesson two was death in a sinful world. Lesson three was understanding human nature. Lesson four, the Old Testament hope. Lesson five, resurrections. And then lesson six, he died for us. Lesson seven, Christ's victory over death. Lesson eight, the New Testament hope. Lesson nine, contrary passages. Ten, the fires of hell, we discussed that. And then 11, we discussed end time deceptions. Then lesson 12, we discussed the biblical world view. And then last week, we looked or discussed about the judgment process. We looked at, we understood that the judgment is a process, it's not an event. It is not a one day. When the Bible uses day to describe the judgment, it is not a single 24 hours day. It is talking about a period of time. And then we have three, and that we have three phases of the judgment. The judgment that will take place before Jesus comes, which is called the pre-advent judgment. And then when he takes the righteous together with, the, I mean, the righteous dead and the living to heaven for a period of thousand years, they will reign with him. The righteous will reign with Christ. It's called the millennial judgment. And then after the thousand years, the wicked will rise to face their punishment. And that is the executive phase, the final phase of the judgment, leading to eternal death, which is the second death as well. Now, when all these things have taken place, what is next? God will make all things new. God will make all things new. Just as we are beginning a new year, afresh, the old year is gone or is going away. So will the old heavens and the old earth pass away for new ones to be made. I want to personally express my profound gratitude to all of you as our cherished viewers. It is because of you that we come to share the word of God with you. Thank you for making time with us every day. I want to also express my sincere appreciation to my beautiful wife, Rebecca Siama Bruni, and our daughters, Nana Mayene Rama, and to all of our loved ones and our church members. Um, I am Pastor Joseph Kusi, 
and I am here with Pastor Martin Osubonsu, my boss, Taifa District Pastor, and Taifa Church Pastor as well. Our regards to Shepherdess Mary Osubonsu as well, and all the kids. God bless you for your support for Pastor and his ministry. Um, Pastor, you are welcome. Thank you, Honorable. I also have with me um, a very good friend and um, an elder from Kolegono District. District. Yeah. Elder Peter Samuel Aloti. He is um, a nutritionist and he has so many things to share. Elder, you're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> How is mommy? And the family, the entire family. Mommy is fine. The entire family, they are doing good. We praise God. We praise God for that. All right. So, beloved, kindly join, bow your heads with us as we pray with Elder Aloti. Father Divine, we thank you for this day. It's you who have called us. So, Divine Lord, glorify yourself in your sons. Father, we have come. Talk to the hearts of the viewers. As you give us the words to say, Father, let us have a new heart. Because everything will be changed. And you take us to the home you've prepared for us. Thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So all things new. All things new. Um, <clears throat> what are the things that are going to be made new? Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 is our foundational scripture. And from the New King James Version, it reads, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. 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 Adalote, what is your thought on this? Yes. I read over this lesson 14 and I was very thrilled. Mm. It's reminding us about his promise. Okay. And his promise, promise of God is sure. Mm. So it's the problem of, you see, we have hope for today. I'm thrilled with this lesson. Mm. So that mm. promises, he has promises, is sure. And really, it's coming to take us to where he has prepared. All right. So everything, everything, everything will be new, irrespective of how the problems are. He has assured us. Great. Certainly, it will be new. Great. I like the last part, irrespective of what the problems are. All things, everything will be new. And the promises are sure. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Right. For these words are true yes. and faithful. <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> yeah, honorable. God created a perfect world and put Adam and Eve in Aden. Mm. That paradise, that Aden, that beautiful place became something else when we decided or our parents decided to disobey thou says the law and so we have gone through series and series of problems as homo sapiens mm -hmm. as human beings we have tasted death and the decay of this world and just as I elder said for God to tell us or for the scriptures to assure us that everything is going to be new is heartwarming mm. it's very very reassuring and for that matter if you are going through any challenge any difficulty <laughs> any kind of trouble the assurance is that things will be new and things are going to change soon and very soon. 
great. In fact, 2 Peter 3, 13 affirms it, that but according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. So <clears throat> um, this, the, the, those who are looking for these new heavens and the new earth are obviously Christians, yes. believers yeah. of God. And um, the, the lesson says, Revelation 21.1 seems like a fantasy. Stories yes. told by those in power who used the hope of an afterlife yes. to help keep the masses in line. Mm -hmm. The idea being, though you have had it hard, though you have it hard at present, one day you have your reward in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, some people have used the future hope presented in the Bible to abuse. Sure. Sure. All right? Yes. To abuse. Sure. Um, but that doesn't change the truth of the promises that we have regarding the new heavens yes. and the new earth. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. In fact, many people um, have problem with religion, yes. even because of colonization. Yes. What our colonial masters used twisted the interpretation, the meaning of the Bible, yes. all right, as a tool to um, um, render their, the, those that they wanted to exploit mm -hmm. powerless. Yes. You understand? Uh -huh. that even, when someone hurts you, give it to God. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, um, have hope in there, and then they will be, they will be robbing you will and be, all of that. Yes. Just as they'll be telling teachers, your reward is in heaven. Yes, yeah, just as they tell us. My <laughs> <laughs> reward is in heaven. And yet, some are enjoying it. Really? Uh -huh. really? But that is just unfortunate. Yeah. And we are saying that though that abuse um, have taken place and may go on, it doesn't change the truth of the Bible. Right. So we don't have to throw the baby away with the water. Mm -hmm. But as Pastor and Elder said, um, the quarter began with the, the lesson, rebellion in a perfect world. Yes. So that rebellion interrupted. That's right. Right? That's right. Um, it marred the, the beauty, beauty and the perfection of God's creation. Yes. And then in between that and all things made new, there is suffering. There is pain. There is death. Right? Yeah. Sorrow. Yes. And all of that. And um, finally, everything is going to be made new. new. All right. So, Let's look at a new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth. Elder. Yes. What is this new heaven and new earth? What is it about? A new heaven and a new earth. Yes. Isaiah is telling us something which is beautiful. Mm. If you open to Isaiah 65, 17 to 24, he wants to tell us something great. He said, the former world will be no more. Mm -hmm. Not even remembering it, remembering it, even to come to your mind. Secondly, he's telling us something again, Jerusalem will be created. Mm -hmm. You see, the voice of weeping should be no more. Sin itself will be cut off. Mm. This new world, this is what we are going to experience on this new earth, new world. Mm -hmm. A new heaven and a new earth. All right. And it will be a very joyous scene to behold. Mm. Mm. So um, <clears throat> Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Yes. Yeah. Prophesied about this. Yes. And then in the New Testament, we also have Second this, Peter. the same promise. Yes. Second Peter 3.13, 3, 13, we read. Yes. And then Revelation 21. That's right. right. Also, we have, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea mm -hmm. was no more. Mm -hmm. Pastor. Yeah. Um, what is the reality? Looking at Isaiah 65, verse 17. Mm. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad 
and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in the people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. What is the prophet talking about? Mm. Israel, they were the people of God, the chosen people. Remember, Peter talks about First Peter 2.9. Um, just as Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 talks mm -hmm. about a royal the, priesthood. A royal priesthood. Mm. They were supposed to be the people of God. And they were. If they had remained truthful and loyal to God, this is a picture that Israel, in itself, will have been mm. on earth here. These pictures that Isaiah is painting will have been the reality for the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that did not happen. But then, you remember the, uh, the prophet Isaiah looking at this, also projecting into the future, even though it did not come to fruition. Mm. For the nation for Israel. For the nation Israel. He made the universal prophecy. For me. That, I see. And that's what um, Peter and uh, John the Revelator mm. are all picking up to let us see that, yes, there'll be a new heaven and there'll be a new earth. Mm. And the former things that we have been seeing will be no more. And righteousness will dwell in this place. Great. Mm -hmm. And I saw the holy city. Yes. New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven mm -hmm. from God, as prepared, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. Mm -hmm. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Many secular writers, without the hope of eternity, as presented in scripture, have lamented the meaningless of human existence. Though they are wrong about the future, why is it hard to argue with their point about the meaningless of life without a future hope. You know, many people, no, Peter talked about the fact that in the last days, yeah. scoffers, yeah, scoffers will come, will come. Yeah. <clears throat> and they will make mockery of the gospel. Make mockery, yeah. make mockery of anything called heaven, mm -hmm. new heavens, I mean, new Jerusalem, and all of that. Many people make mockery. And in fact, some even, we even have some religious leaders or pastors who are now saying that yeah. uh, we Christians are even the ones to blame yeah. for um, laziness and laziness people. and poverty yeah, that's right. and not taking good care of this environment. Yeah. Because we say that we are waiting for, we are hoping for a better place. So it means that we are not taking um, our this lives one serious. serious. This one yeah. serious. And all of that. The question is, what is the meaningless of life without a future hope? Yes. Can, we, can life be meaningful without a future hope? If you don't have hope. Mm. I, I quite remember in one of our summer schools, they gave, um, what do you call it, uh, an experiment that was conducted on some rats. And they put the rat in water, and they observed the number of minutes that they spent in the water, and they began to draw. Mm. <clears throat> they removed them, fed them, and put them in the water again. So for the first time that they dropped them in the water, they checked, they noted the time, very short, they drawn. The second one, they rescue them, fed them, give them medication, and drop them again. Mm -hmm. But this time round, 
they spent a lot of time floating. The conclusion of that experiment, experiment. was that they were the same group of rats that drawn in the first instance, mm. very short time. Yeah. But the second time, they remained afloat. Why? Because they had hope that they would be rescued. Because they were rescued in their form up mm. one. Mm -hmm. Now, they still have hope that a rescue team will come. Will come. And for that hope, they never gave mm. up. All right. They remain on top. Mm. For us human beings, we have um, suicides here and there because people lose hope. Yes. If you don't have hope, that means you have lost your very existence. And that's why Adventists say, we have hope. We have this hope. That burns within our that heart. That burns within our heart. And that is the hope. that hope in the coming, coming of, of the Lord. Lord. Mm. This is very reassuring. A life of humanity without hope. Mm. It's, it's meaningless, meaningless and empty. Very and empty. no wonder, we, um, in that case, then we will agree with Solomon yeah. when he declares, vanity upon, upon vanity. vanity, all is vanity. vanity. We will try and do the song 214 um, okay. as we end. Oh, when, all right. As we end the lesson. <laughs> um, I, I'm hoping that we will have the time yeah. to do so. We have this hope that burns within our hearts. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have... We have um, just established the reality of the new God making everything new, or God making the new heavens and the new earth, right? Yeah. The new heavens and the new earth. But but let us be clear, a bit clear on this also as well. All right. Um, this planet that we are on, all right? That's right. That is what will be. Um, prepared anew. Is that's, that not so? That's right. Good. That's right. That is what to be prepared anew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, we go to the next one. In the temple of God. Yes. In the temple of God. Pastor. Yeah. What is it about? Let, let's read from um, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Verse 9 Following. to 15, okay. Maybe you read uh, some portion. Yes. Can you take it for us? Yes, yes. So, after this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to God, to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. All right, so... Um God has always been worshipped in a temple. Mm. So before sin came, God was worshipped in a temple. In a sinful world, the dwelling place, which was also the place that God was worshipped, became the place that salvation emanated from. Mm. So when you can recall, during their journey on, um, in the wilderness, yes. God spoke to Moses saying, let them make me a sanctuary mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I may dwell among them. Yes. In this sanctuary, Exodus 25 verse 8, verse eight yes. that was made. In fact, God specifically told Moses to look at the structure, the dimension, that one that he showed him and he should do same. In the earthly temple, you could see that it fit what was above. And it was the throne room of God mm. looking at the ark. So the point is that it's because of sin that there has been a difference. When sin is no more, we are going to 
worship God. In fact, the tabernacle of God will be among us. Yes. I think it is said in um, Revelation, Revelation chapter, chapter 21, 21 yes. and verse 3. three. Yes. Can we read that? Let me, 21 verse 3. It says, yes. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself would be with them and be their God. So that temple, that seat of Jehovah, that same place that salvation comes from, is the same place that we will worship him. Mm. It has always been his dwelling place. And therefore, if we are here, don't, don't forget, before we even get there, he wants to dwell in our bodies as a living temple. Mm. So the temple of God, in the temple of God, if we worship God in his temple, if we sanctify ourselves, our human body, as the living uh, temple of the living God, mm -hmm. we may have this chance, when things are made new, to be in, his, uh, in that temple where we will be worshipped forever. I mean, we'll be worshiping God forever and ever. Great. Great. Thank you, Pastor. So the point is that God is the creator. Yes. And as the creator, he alone deserves and is worthy of worship, right? Sure. And he has been worshipped yes. throughout eternity or ages. And <clears throat> um, in the new heavens... Those who are redeemed, the redeemed, will have no other work apart from worshiping. 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 Yeah. worshiping. But before that, right now, right now, we are to worship God in truth and in spirit, in spirit. right? Yes. According to John chapter 5, verse um, 23, as Jesus told the, the woman, woman. Yeah. The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and, in and truth. truth. Yeah. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. All right? Yes. So, um, our, how we worship God right now mm -hmm. has an effect or will determine even whether we will be part of the future worship. Yes, that's, that also. yes because, that's the point. Mm -hmm. Because he, the book of Revelation gives special attention. To worship. To the one who is being worshipped. Mm. And to those who are worshipping him. You see, this heavenly worship is concentrated on God and the Lamb. Mm. You can find this in Revelation 15, 5 verse 13. All right. Also in Revelation 7 verse 10. Mm. But as always as it should be, Christ is the focus of the worship. All right. So the other time, you made mention of Jesus' interaction with the woman. Mm. And when the woman was convinced that Jesus was not a mere man, she made a confession and said, you, you Jews, you, you say we should be worshiping only mm. in Jerusalem. Yes. But our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And Jesus said, you worship what you, you do, do not, not know. know. We, we worship what we know. Because salvation is of the Jews. Mm. And that's where he brought what you said. So the point is that those who worship that God that they know, they have a meaning in their worship. Mm. And therefore... Um, it will not be in the temple in Jerusalem or on top of that mountain. But if we have that kind of relationship within, with our creator, we worship him everywhere. And this kind of living and worshiping God everywhere we go will qualify us to be among those who can worship God. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. In fact, this is... Um, it is it's so crucial and it is the center of everything yes. worship yes. 
worship. And as Jesus told the woman, the time is, and now it is, that true worshipers of God must worship him in truth, in spirit truth. and in truth. Yes. And throughout this quarter, you know, the topics and the issues that we have dealt with are biblical teachings that establish the truth as it is yes. in Jesus. So some may wonder, uh, oh, we, we are not so much interested in doctrines and this and that. Mm -hmm. What is important is loving um, God and loving your neighbor as yourself and accepting Jesus as your savior and all of that. But we are told that truth is essential when it comes to worship so that we can worship God the right way. Jesus told the woman, you do not know what you worship. So it's possible that some people are worshiping some things. It's possible yes. that, that you can worship what you do not know. But in the temple of God, the temple here, pastor and elder, the temple here is not referring to physical place, right? Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. It's not referring to just physical place, sure. but wherever two or three have gathered in his name, he is there. He's, He's there. there. But so when we go to heaven, the, that uh, total environment yes. will be the place that we will worship him. Exactly. Because he will be in our midst. He'll be in our midst. And then also, then we will, have, we will be also be in the presence of God. That's yes. right. So Heather, tell us, in the presence of God. Or oh, that's pastor. Um, yeah, elder. In the elder presence you, of yes. God. Mm -hmm. If we open to Matthew 5, 8. Yes. First John 3, 2 and 3. And Revelation 22, 3 and 4. Mm. He's telling us something here. He said, Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see so God. They shall see God. So we should know that we are his children. And God has a children. Mm. And we are represented. On this earth and don't forget his name will be written on our forehead mm. in the presence of God his name will be written in our forehead though in the end our title to heaven has been made certain through the death of Jesus we will go through and purifying process here and now that we will help prepare us for our internal hope and central to the purification process. It's obedient to his word. Mm. It's obedient to his word. So um, when you open to John chapter 1 verse 18, mm -hmm. it says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Yes. Um, Sister White says, since sin came into the picture, the revelation of the Father has always been through the Son. Mm. John, who says, no one has seen the Father, also says, we will see Him face to face, what had happened. In his presence, the saved will see him face to face. Mm -hmm. um, before then, we couldn't see him. Do you remember uh, Moses mm -hmm. went on top of the mountain? Mm -hmm. When he came, the people couldn't behold him. Yes. He had to cover his face. We also know that if Jesus Christ even descends the second time, his glory, his and glory brightness will burn will the, wicked. the wicked. And that's how come he will translate those who are alive and are righteous mm -hmm. together with the dead. All right. But how come that now we are going to see him? Because he has permitted us. And with that glorious new life, mm. we will see him face to face and he will be with us always and that um there are people who may say that we will not because of this test we cannot see him but the book of revelation makes it clear mm. that we will see him face to face sure. in his 
presence we will always be. Sure. And that is a reassuring message. And in First John chapter 3, verse 2, verse it is two. clear here. Yeah. Beloved, now we are children of God, mm -hmm. and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. Yes. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. As he is. So all these are promises. All these promises are part of the reward that will come to the righteous, That's that right. will come to the redeemed. Yes. And they are to give us hope. Friends, we are going through a lot. Mm. You may be going through a lot. Suffering, pain, sadness, sorrow, injustice, unfairness, everywhere. But if you put your faith and your trust and you rely on God and have hope in his coming, one day you'll be in his presence and it is going to be a joyous, a joyous moment. Mm, yeah. No more death and tears. No more death and tears. And that is based on Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, right, yes, Pastor? Yes. Sure. We can already we read it? We read it. Yes, but let me read wipe. it from yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25, mm. verse 8. All right. Isaiah 25, verse 8. It says, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, mm. for the Lord has spoken. If there is anything that I love about the topic we are treating mm. this week, this one is mm. it, no more dead. Mm. Pastor, you see, we fear death. Yes. Loved ones have died. My mother is dead, and I cried when I lost my mother. Some people have lost their husbands, wives, hmm. sons, yeah. dear, cherished friends, yeah. people who fed them, people who were breadwinners in their families have died. Mm. And since the death of those people, their lives have no longer been the same. And the pain and of the not pain. them for such a long time lingers on yeah. in their minds. Yeah. If we have this assurance that a day is coming, that there will be no more death and tears, it's reassuring. Mm. And it is only proper that those of us who have lost loved ones, and if only they were Christians, we also tell ourselves that we will live righteous lives so that we can see them when Jesus comes. Yes, this hope that we are talking about is reassuring us that a day is coming. Mm -hmm. And just as Isaiah is saying, he will swallow up death. That is a hope. Sure, mm -hmm. it is. In fact, no wonder that Paul once again talks about in First Corinthians, the book of Corinthians, yeah. that when death is swallowed up in victory, mm -hmm. then, um, he will, then will the saying come true um, that death, where is your victory? Mm. And grave, where is your um, power, right? That's right. Because death is something that um, is, the, is, 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 the, is the most dreaded, dreaded, yes. yeah. the most dreaded of sin. Of sin. Yeah. Of sin. And sin. everybody is afraid sure. when you, you enter in people's homes because of the fear of death, things people go through, mm. the concoctions people drink, yeah. mm. the, the talisman. Mm. For protection. <laughs> 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 All right. So, um, Elder, is there something you want to add? Yes. No more death mm. and tears. You see, our promises are sure. Let's remember that very soon our Savior will return mm. and save us all. 
But the Sabbath school wants to tell us that regardless of our sorrows, however, God is always eager to wipe away from our cheeks, you see, the tears. But some of our heaviest tears will continue streaming down until the glorious day yeah. when death, mm -hmm. sorrow, and crying will cease to exist. Praise the Lord. In Revelation 21, 1 to 5. Yes. So we can trust that in the final judgment, God will treat every single human being with fairness and love. All our loved ones who die in Christ will have eternal life. Mm. Finally cease to exist without having to leave. We will all be saved. You see, our greatest comfort drives from the far away God treats everyone. When death definitely cease to exist. Mm. Yes, we will be redeemed. And with a shout, with a shout, a, a, a shout, we shall shout joyfully. Yes, we shall shout joy, joyfully. Death. Wet. Yes. Death. Where is your victory? Mm. Where is your sting? Where is your sting? Sure, sure. We've all felt the unfair ravages of human existence here. Yes. Especially in bad times. But how can we learn to trust and to the degree possible mm -hmm. rejoice in God's goodness? Mm -hmm and love mm -hmm. because of the hope right yes. christ yes, right. us yes. the hope of glory yes yeah, so also for there is another thing mm. you see satan has as a weapon around that we have this uh, sister wise says about immortality of soul and the sacredness of sunday mm. will be too most Dangerous and time deception. End time deception. And, and death, the immortality of soul, has been so much conspicuous in the uh, Christian mm. But if we have immortal soul, why, why is the Bible talking about there will be no more death? Which means the theory of immortal soul crumbles before the, the word of God, the, word of God. God. the plain teachings of the scripture. Sure, mm. that is a fact, and that is why our friends out there, we should look at what the Bible teaches. Yes, when you go into our traditional beliefs, mm. the things, our practices during um, our funerals. Mm show that we believe some kind of immortality, immortality. Of the soul. yes but then if it is a bible then we don't have it so if we are christians and we have crossed over from paganism into christianity mm. we should allow the book of life that is what i call it yes we should allow this book to be the basis upon which we derive our doctrines sure. and put them to practice. Sure, mm -hmm. exactly that, Pastor. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we still have um, aspects of baptized paganism, yeah, which presents itself as a form of Christianity. Yes. But the concepts that the people believe in and practice are pagan concepts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, not so different from what our um, fathers who believed in traditional I mean, That's right. paganism, paganism yeah. were practicing. That's right. Just that this time we have the pulpit mm -hmm. and the altar in the church house. So, um, what the point that um, we pastor just made, and it has been it has been established so strongly yeah. in this quarter's lesson is that the first preaching that Satan made that is that thou shall not, not surely, surely die. die. Mm -hmm. God said you will surely die. Satan said you will not surely die. All right? Yeah. And that is where the, the notion it. of immortality of the soul is from. Uh, and that is why this, this quarter we have gone through this lesson on 
the, the, the state of the dead and as it relates to other important teaching, biblical teaching. Yeah. So it is not just about doctrines, mm -hmm. that we are just um, interested in doctrines mm -hmm. or teachings, but we are talking about salvation. Yes. Salvation, because Satan just introduced knots yeah. into God's word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't change the entire statement, Which he just introduced, introduced so. knots. Yes. And the entire meaning changed, right? Yeah. So when God speaks, any form of deviation from it has terrible consequences. And unfortunately, mm. funerals that are conducted by our churches, you will have tributes that are read, and we will be speaking to, to the, the dead instead of about the dead. That is the point. Tribute should be about the, the dead, dead, not to the to dead. To the dead. And unfortunately, maybe the other time we met um, at the office and the president was furious about mm. this. Yeah. That pastors will be held accountable mm. if we have a funeral. And in that funeral, the tributes that are read in them, there's an, a notion of speaking to the dead. Yeah. And so he has cautioned us and uh, commanded us to vet and be careful of whatever is read at our funerals. Mm. And so, as we are sharing, we may forget, and as we write tributes, we speak to the dad who is gone, mm. and the Bible says he does not hear anything. Yeah. He has no portion or part of whatever of this we life. And how can you address him? Yeah. So we must be careful. We have to. We have to. And the hope of the resurrection mm -hmm. at the second coming of Jesus That's right. is what should comfort us. That is the point. We all agree. We all admit that such moments are terrible and painful moments. Yes. All right? But we should have comfort. That's why Paul said, these words should so comfort, comfort, comfort you, you. All right. Yeah. So that you still let the, the word of God become supreme, um, but not um, deviate from it. Finally, finally, the reward of the righteous. Yes. God's name written on our foreheads. God's name written on our foreheads. Um, pastor, right? Uh, actually, so that it, is it should be elder. Yeah, okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. elder. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it's name mm -hmm. on their foreheads. Yes, as we name. wrap up. Mm. Revelation wants to bring something to our notice. Revelation 22 3 to 5. He said, We will be saved. No more curse on earth, no more light, but there will be the glory of God will be the light. All right. But uh, uh, Paul wants to draw something closer to us. Mm. Paul wrote about Abraham, eh, who mm. exists long before the coming of Christ, as an example of salvation by faith. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted on him for righteousness. Mm. So it's about trust and obey. All right. And Romans want to, to remind us, Romans 4, 2 to 3. So how do these verses help to understand what salvation by faith is all about? Mm. It's all about trust and obey. All right. But there is no other way than to trust and, and obey. obey. We can have the assurance of salvation if we have accepted Jesus, have surrendered to him, and have claimed his yes. promises, yes. including those of a new life now in him, and if we lean totally on his merits and nothing else. Yes. Pastor, yeah. final comments as we bring this Cortez lesson to an end. Um, it has been an eventful um, quarter. Mm. The last quarter of this year, 
looking at what happened in the economy of this country and in the pockets of people, mm -hmm. people have lost hope. People have mm -hmm. lost hope in politicians. Yes. People mm. have lost hope in the systems of the world. Mm, yes. And once we have lost that hope, we invite you to lift up your hands and look at the hope that we have yes. in Jesus Christ. So at the end of it all, his name will be on our forest. That is total ownership. Yes. He owns us. He is our father. And in the end time where we're going to have the mark of the beast and the seal of God, God's seal will always be on our forehead. Mm. That means... Which represents the mind. The mm. mind. Mm, the mind. And you know, Paul talked about be transformed yes. by the renewing renewal of, the mind. of the your mind. mind. And that is what God wants from us. Our will surrendered to himself and he taking control of our lives is what will make the total ownership of God on our lives. Mm. And therefore, yes, we have cause to lose hope in the systems of the world. Mm. But Jesus says, come to me, mm. all who are labored and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Great, great. Was there any, any, um, any final word to your district? Sure. Um, <laughs> God willing, we are launching into the new year yeah. um, with more power, more spirituality. And I pray that if there's nothing at all, let's remember that because Jesus can come at any time, let's live lives that are worthy. That when he comes, we will not run away from him. All right. And the district will be moving mm. forward mm. with power sure. and uh, uh, all that we need to move on as a district. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. All right. So greetings to all Taifa district members. Sure, 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 sure. All right. Elder. Really? Mm. Yeah. Final um, remarks? You see, this our last lesson deals with the Christian ultimate hope. The Christian ultimate hope. And okay. longing for mm. the time God will establish the new heaven and the new earth. All right. All the old order in our sinful world will pass away. Mm. Our sinful past will be no longer troublous. And all our feelings, sin will pass away. Our disappointments will be no more. Mm. All right. This is our God we have waited for. And when time is no more, he, the great shepherd, will come and take us to where he has prepared for us. That's this is the greatest hope. Amen. Ultimate hope. Our ultimate Amen. hope. So, beloved viewers, um, thank you so much for staying with us. Mm -hmm. And as I said at the beginning, <laughs> I wish all of you a prosperous new year. Next year, for the first two quarters of the year, we have very interesting um, lessons. The first quarter, we're going to talk talks about money. You know, talks about money, <laughs> and it's important. Yes, <laughs> because of the time that we have, we we, we, we are. Yes. Mm. Um, so, pay attention. Let's 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 prepare ourselves for that. And then this, the the next lesson talks about. Um, I mean, the second quarter. We'll talk about the God's cosmic messages, the yes. three angels' messages, and their um, meanings for us. Kindly bow your heads as um, Pastor Martin commits us into God's hands as we usher ourselves into this new year. And before that, my final greetings to Pastor Chris and Mensa and your family. All right, Pastor, let's pray. Shall we pray? Father, we are grateful to you. In spite of our difficulties and challenges and troubles, you have given us a word in this lesson that says, all things are going to be made new. Father, 
If there's anything that we can't trust, let us trust your word Amen. and behave so that these things that are going to be made new, we may be partakers of this new hope. Father, bless us. We commit our churches into your hands. Amen. We commit the youth of this country and the church into your hands. We pray that this new year that we have entered, we pray that you take good care of us and help us to relate with you in the right sense so that when there will be no more time, we can be among the saved. Bless us and bless the church in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy New Year. Bye-bye.